Hey, what's up, everyone? Um, I yeah, I want to touch more on racking spray paint, stealing spray paint, shoplifting spray paint. Uh, it's a conversation I could go on and on and on about for quite a while, and um, I had pretty sneaky ideas and, and ways of doing this, so. Um, I might as well get into a bunch of it. And the reason I say I like to, and you have to watch my first part of this, I guess this would be part two. But <clears throat> what I meant by taking large quantities at once, uh, like once I became of legal age, uh, it's just kind of there was, I, like if you listen to other people that were stealing paint back then and writing graffiti, they, um, literally went to fucking all these crazy stores all over the fucking city and Long Island. But don't get me wrong, I used to go out to Long Island too. My mother and father were divorced. My father had a house out in Smithtown, Long Island. I'd go out there, would hit Rickles and uh, Channels and all these different stores out there. They had TSS out there, <clears throat> steel spray paint. That's back there. That's before they put them in the metal racks and stuff like that. I mean, I'd steal a bunch of spray paint. I remember some of this, that we'd bring it back into the city and shit. I got a funny story, but with uh, D3 and JJ and them, but I'm gonna wait until I actually get D3 on there. I always hang out with him. He's, he's actually in the hospital right now, yeah. Yeah, he got a motorcycle accident. <laughs> but, um, or a scooter, or some moped, something. But um, anyway, all right, getting back to stealing spray paint. Yeah, what I meant by that is, if you hear these other people doing pieces and stuff, they want a certain color, it's like, you know, they literally take train rides or walk, or take buses, and go to the ends of the fucking earth for a can of fucking uh, icy grape, or Spanish brown or beige, or different red colored, all types of shit, they, you know. Anyway, me, like, I'd rather just steal something that's expensive, sell it, and then be like, yeah, I'll take that can right there, and let me get two of those, and one of those, and I'm chilling, and I don't gotta, like, yo, that shit takes a lot of time, what, steal, you know what I mean, I mean, I got sweatpants on today, but if, uh, see, but uh, what happened, you know, you get fucking, like I was saying before about stealing paint, you take two cans here, three cans here. I mean, honestly, the most paint I've ever actually put on my person without a bag or anything, probably around nine cans, nine to eight cans. I hear people saying 15 and 20 and all this shit. Uh, it's a bit much. I mean, some of these dudes, they were known for shit. Like I said, I'm not the only one that was running around out there robbing and stealing and doing shit. That's what we did. Like, that. that's how people grew up in the city uh, back then. And what I'm saying is, instead of me taking trains and buses and all this crazy shit, and going and getting one can here, two cans there, I'd rather, if I had it that way, like I said with the Winter Garden Theater and shit, I didn't necessarily have to do all that shit. And to waste all that time doing that shit, when, think about it, a can of spray paint was what? Like, Two dollars and fifty cents or something like that back then. Like the shit was cheap. Like, you can steal all that. Fuck that. You're same shit. You stick down your pants. Be sixty nine ninety nine on sale or something. You know, something else that you can sell for thirty forty bucks. Run out and buy a couple of cans this stuff. You know, like or you, you can really get crazy or creative if you start thinking about shit that costs thousands of dollars and you sell it for hundreds of dollars. You know, yeah, you get what I'm saying. Like two dollars, like. Can of paint, like come on, man. <laughs> like I, you know, like if the whole like come on, like I don't know. Once I became of age, like I said, once I became of legal age to purchase spray paint, that's the reason why. But I would, I mean, yo, you could ask anyone, any motherfucking human being that knows me that actually wrote with me, and they'll tell you like straight on up, my whole life, I. I all right, I wasn't stealing or shoplifting and selling towards the end, like when they arrested me in 2017. But what I would do instead is I would paint on street signs or I'd paint on a canvas and sell that and all the art supplies are stolen. You know what I'm saying? Uh, most of them anyway. I mean, nowadays you can get a stack of fucking canvases for like $9.99 or something, you know? But yeah, most of the paintbrushes, oil paints. My son's got a bunch of oil paints in there, so I don't have to mess with that. He, 
loves doing oil paint portraits and shit, but any kind of paint, acrylic paints, I have so much of it here. Kez Five gave me a whole shitload of acrylic paint before he passed away. But I paint paint. If not, it's only a couple of dollars a tube or something, you know. But yeah, I would sell my artwork and then I would have a little money and I'd buy spray paint and I'd write on fire hydrants and shit like that. Although the original idea of the fire hydrant thing came about from me stealing cases of this green rubberized rebar paint from construction sites. They used this paint to fucking paint the poles that they run through the cement. It's like a green color. We're going to tell you another day. Right now I'm talking about other rack stories. All right, we have this place called Talco. You know what it is? I was watching some of my videos, and the way I skip around and talk, I mean, I'm a New Yorker, and I know I talk funny and shit. It's just the way it is. But, um, yeah, I don't think I'm being descriptive enough. And, uh, uh, so I could always come back on here and explain what I meant or something like that. But... Anyway, yeah, there was this hardware store called Talco that was on 76th and 77th Street on 2nd Avenue. And Talco was on the ground floor, the concrete's right here, a storefront. Now, right above that was my friend Chucky. The Mavroidis has lived there. Yeah, Chucky Mavroidis, Kevin Mavroidis, Michael Mavroidis, who just passed away about, I don't know, by now, about two years ago. I see I had uh, Chucky, Chucky Mavroidis. He was probably actually the original person that um, I first ran around with, right, in graffiti. He'd probably be the very first person. Now, if that also Eddie Bannock, I, I wrote with him early, early on. That was like fifth, sixth grade or something like that, just fucking around in the neighborhood and shit, you know? But yeah, Chucky wrote Chucky, wrote Step. He started getting up a little bit on the IRTs. <clears throat> but anyway, he lived right above this hardware store called Talco. Might even still be there. And we'd go down the fire escape at night. <clears throat> His mother was a waitress. So <clears throat> she wouldn't be there at night. We'd go through the window, <clears throat> his kitchen window, down the fire escape, into the backyard of the place. Right here you would have like a window to Talco hardware store. Had bars on it. So we had all the time in the fucking world, almost like prisoners trying to escape. You know, we sat there fucking around, fucking around. We undid the screws eventually. So we were able to pull this gate out, put it on the floor, open the window. And this is back in the days, no, no cameras, it's in the backyard, no alarms on the windows. A lot of that shit started kicking up later, but I opened the window. Most of the time, if I did do a, a store robbery, I'd actually do my entrance and not even enter. I'd go sit across the street and shit, wait about 15, 20 minutes, see if any cop cars pull up. If not, then I'll run in. Unless I know exactly where the item is that I'm there to get, then I'll just boop, 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 and I'm gone, you know? But anyway, in this particular situation, it was Talco hardware. <clears throat> Take the gate off the window, put it on the floor, open the window, climb in there. And we could have took whatever the fuck we wanted. <clears throat> We're young and stupid. Oh, we grab spray paint, you know. And even now, we didn't even go crazy. So it was always a good little rack. But you could always get some real pretty colors in that place. <clears throat> and when we were done, I mean, we pulled cases out of that place. We just keep putting them like this, break right up the fire escape to his house and shit. We were, but it was just, our minds were thinking smaller, you know, we were younger. But, yeah, we'd get about three, four cases. Later on, by the time 85, 86 came around, and I truly understood, like, what was going on, <clears throat> yeah, I hit them pretty heavy once or twice, and then they fixed that shit up, and yeah, they fixed it so you couldn't do that shit no more. Yeah, that was another place. Um, and, yeah, I think it was Martin or Kraus on 79th Street and 2nd Avenue. <clears throat> Right on the corner. I believe now it's a Dwayne Reed or some shit like that. But <clears throat> you go in the store. The first floor, it's all like little cheap pieces of rugs. I believe they call them swatches or some shit. <clears throat> and uh, people that are selling rugs and tiles for your floor and shit. And there was a staircase in the back that went up. <clears throat> it was 
like half the floor, like a balcony almost, or like a duplex, exactly a duplex, with a little railing fence that you could look downstairs. <clears throat> There's never no one up there. As a matter of fact, the bathrooms are up there. <clears throat> I go, up, that's where the spray paint is. Now, at this point, they would have it in a metal cage, so they figured it was safe. But let me point out, <clears throat> right next to this metal cage of spray paint, there's a window right here. <laughs> it was one of the little windows that you got to roll like this. I don't know if you can see my hand, but you roll it like this, and it goes, like it kind of goes like that. It's not like an up and down. It goes, as you roll it, it goes out and out and out. You know? So <clears throat> I'd roll it, roll it, roll it. Now, when you're dealing with these wire cages, it spray paints in. What you got, I'm gonna, normally the lock is on this side, but to show you clearer, I'm going to do it here. <clears throat> it's a metal thing like this. Man. You take this part. It's got like a fence. You grab the fence. You pull it almost like a bow and arrow. And you want to, because it's metal, it'll buckle. It'll go like this. Do it enough, it'll open up. Bing. But sometimes it'll make noise. Sometimes you'll actually hear the pain. Sometimes you'll see the people look up. Like, what's going on up there? But if you have like a little face towel. I always found a face towel is good. A handkerchief is too thin. So for face down, you wrap around, you can actually muffle some of that sound. And then from there, you just start taking that paint and throw it right out the fucking window. Just go like this. Like I would literally, one hand takes it out, hands it to the other hand. This hand passes it down. After I make sure I have eye contact with my person down there. You don't want cans hitting the fucking concrete in the sidewalk. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so I look at my friend, I'm like, oh, you know, we good? Uh-huh. Two. Three, like one, two, three, you know, and then I take one, boom, and it was just like clockwork. <clears throat> take one out, hand it here, pass it, take it out, boom, take it out, boom, take it out, boom, you know, <clears throat> close the thing back up and leave. We have a problem. I can take every can in the fucking thing if I wanted to. Uh, Janovic. Plaza, 6867 Street, right around the corner from the precinct. I'm going to get D3 on here for that. He's still alive, and he's one person that um, has been around for a lot of that little shit when I was stealing paint, because I was young with him. And the only reason, like I said, was I was too young to actually purchase the shit. You know? It's not like I'm going to say, hey, mom, can I get some, can you, hey, mom, can you come with me to buy some gray paint so I can write on some ways? I need the woman will beat the shit out of me, you know? So that was the only delay is the fact that I was too young. And that's the only reason I had to actually approach it that way. You know, like I said, I, I, I couldn't phantom. I mean, I would just assume, like, maybe someone's got, like, a, I don't know. I, I have actually a very high IQ, but I, I couldn't understand why someone, once they become of that age, unless they're just talking to sound like they're really in the mix or something, but I couldn't understand why someone, once they became of legal age to purchase spray paint, that they'd still run all over the fucking city and steal two dollars and fifty cents here, two dollars and fifty cents there. All right, so they get five cans. What two, three, two, three fifteen bucks? Or and I have twenty bucks to round it off. They go into like fucking South Jamaica Queens <laughs> from like the Bronx or something for five dollars, twenty dollars. I mean, that's just insane to me. I don't know. Like I said, maybe I see things differently. I mean. But yeah, no, <laughs> that the hell though, me? Nah, I got too much other shit to do, man. You know, like I said, uh, nah, <laughs> hell no, nah. I ain't gonna sit there doing all that crazy shit, man. Nah, that was never me, man. Fuck that. Nah, yeah, I'd rather get a bunch of ink. <laughs> a bunch of ink and do insides and shit, yo, for real. Yeah, but I, I hear that stuff, and I mean, yo, know, power to the people and their dedication and shit, but yeah, nah, that shit ain't me. Fuck that. Another way I got paid is robbing other graffiti writers. I did that a lot. I've actually went with graffiti writers. I ain't gonna blow you up. I know that you guys are like, oh no, please, please. But I've actually brought writers that weren't necessarily involved with me to go to places. Yeah, we do whole cars, do this, do that. I swear, <clears throat> there's one guy. I actually had JJ357. He was in the tunnel with lace. You know, so this guy, you know, then a new Jack writer, you know, like these guys just start that year or so, you know. Bang, you know, come in. So like, shh, you know, once they start going, shh, yeah, shh, shh. You heard that? And 
it. No, I ain't hear nothing of it. Shh. There's someone else here. There's someone here. And at this point, the dude's like, oh, oh, fuck, let's get out of here. Like, his mind's already made up. But then I get crazy old Lace, my boy Lace, L-A-C-E, 357. He used to be down with that ESP. And JJ357, John Zavolos, God rest his soul. They come creeping up. Like, hey, hey, you know, like, <laughs> making noise, but it's from a distance. So it's like, oh, At this point, the person actually hears the shit. They're like, no, oh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I'm like, just relax, relax. Everything is okay. Let me, let me go check it out. You know? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Comes. <laughs> I'm like, yo, come on. Now just leave your pain, man. Let's get the fuck out of here. We don't got that. You know? <laughs> they leave all the pain. Lace in there. And JJ take that pain, you know? I swear, we did have a couple of dudes, man. We were fucking with them, you know. You know, they were from the IRTs and shit. They wanted to jump out of the BMTs and shit. We were like, yo, oh. <laughs> ziggy, ziggy, zam. <laughs> yo, that shit was classic. Yo, I'm going to talk to the dude, man. He got duped, man. He knows it nowadays. I'm going to ask him, man. He come on here and confirm that shit. That's funny shit. Yeah, it was one time I remember that. I also remember, and I'll mention his name, for, it was actually two like knapsacks filled with paint. We were coming into the layup, and whoever, they ran away. So um, I picked up the bags of paint, and it was an outline on a piece of paper. Inside that bag of paint, it said Dero, D-E-R-O, and had little TFA tags and stuff. And I think there was another outline that said Blues Brothers. Yeah. We went through the bag and shit, but we used the paint. I mean, when you ran away, you know. Always liked your work. TFA, yeah. I knew Charles Tank. I knew a lot of guys from TFA, man. Yeah. I knew a lot of dudes. Tony, everyone, man. But yeah, this guy, I guess he didn't know. I mean, who the fuck was coming? He ran away. Yeah. That's one time I remember that. Yeah, he wrote Dero, D-E-R-O. Yeah. Um, Janovic, I think I was telling you, I started to get into Janovic Plaza, 67, 68th Street, on uh, 3rd Avenue. I'd actually go in the back of that place. I'd, I'd go, the paint, they actually, at that point, they had it behind like plexiglass with the little lock on it that you zip through. But you can still, once again, like a bow and arrow, that shit's flexible, it bends, you bend it past the cylinder. But that place, it's kind of like a lot of people and shit, so you don't want to fuck around there. I found it easier just to walk right into the back. I go right in the back, and once again, I get the cases boxed, you know? But I mean, I did fuck up on that. I mean, you don't have enough time to actually sit there looking at what you're buying, you're getting and shit, and I got a bunch of that real shitty yellow shit that drips. What was it, like bright yellow? It's one of them shit's glossy yellow or some shit. Kind of bullshit. I didn't, you know, you don't have time to do all that. You just gotta, you, seconds, you know. I'll tell you one thing. I actually put the smock on. <laughs> you know, like they have an apron and shit. They used to wear these aprons and shit. I didn't even tie it in the back. So, oh, well, I just go through the paint. You know, it's like jungle green. Yeah, yeah, that. Andrew likes that. I could always trade him for something with this, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, avocado, that's what it was, because I did the Franklin Avenue shuttle. Hey, I'm going to put the picture on of that same bubble letter. I did a big, huge bubble letter with some of that same avocado. Franklin Avenue shuttle, I have a picture of that. I'm going to put it on this. I'm going to talk to my son about it. At the end, so keep your eyes open, watch this shit to the end. It was a bubble letter, you know, it's the big snotty old bubble letter. Those bubble letters, I actually got them from this dude, Rook, R-O-O-K. Yeah, MPC guy, bumped into him. Up into twos and fives. I forget who I was with, but I was doing insides. I never did outsides a day in my life at that point. It was really early on. And he told me, Broomhilda. We'll talk about that some other time. Like, Broomhilda, the comic book strip. That's the way he thought about it. Yeah, but I'll talk about that some other time. Yeah, so I'd steal a lot of paint. And Johnny Plaza, it's funny. I had this fucking thing on. <clears throat> it's Abram screaming through the paint. A lady walks by over here. <clears throat> You know, so my butt is out, and I'm tall. I'm like the, <clears throat> so for her to pass through, to go right out, to the curtain, I to go right out. I had to put my butt in, so I go like this. She said, you ain't Lewis. <laughs> I looked down, and she said, Lewis. 
and I got it hanging off me like I'm like, you know, it's not like I can say, excuse me, I'm looking for the bathroom. Like I got some dude smock on it. I ain't him. Like I'm like, I had to took it off. Like I got the fuck out of there. You ain't Lewis. That was a funny one. Yeah. We also had this place, Mary Arnold's. Small, small time. This is what you talk about. Pilfering. I was never a pilfering type guy. Although most of these stories, you could tell I was never greedy. I always left enough, you know, because it's the long haul, man. But Mary Arnold's had the little testers. Uh, it, like I said, a short scam, you know, bullshit. Those that would just literally like this. One hand would be here, the other one would just be sticking the ring in my sleeve. One after the other, after the other, right up my sleeve, you know. Um, mm. Smithtown, Long Island, too. And there was a child world. Grab the whole fuck load of testers. I had like 60 of them fucking things, man. Not just on my person. You know? <clears throat> I actually had my cousin with me. Yeah, we flipped it. It's actually, we had fish and tackle. You know, we're in, it actually you used to have like a little section. He needed to get a new reel for his um, fishing pole. You know, we'd fish in the Miller's Pond out in Smithtown, Long Island. And catch bass and big old bullhead catfish and shit like that. <clears throat> I personally didn't eat the stuff. I caught them just for sport. Most of the time I let them loose again. Caught a couple of big ass snapping turtles. I felt bad I had to fuck their mouth up because I couldn't take the hook out. I just cut that rope and left it, you know, the wire, the 20 pound wire or something like that. But uh, anyway, yeah, we go into there. Child world, still a bunch of. We had tackle boxes, like I said. Put them in the fucking tackle boxes. <laughs> yeah, we're doing everything with them fucking things. Put them in the fucking bass, down pads, back pockets, the whole shit. Yeah, we had a whole fuckload of that shit, man. Yeah, the purples were cool. The orange was nice, too, with that stuff. And a lot of that fucking thing. By the time I went back to Manhattan, I got to stay out there. Like, my mother and father were divorced. So in the summer, <clears throat> when I was a young teenager, <clears throat> like very young, probably 12, 13, 14, 15. And by the time I was 16, 17, I was like, fuck that, I'd rather just chill in the city, you know? But yeah, she'd just give me and my brother to my father so we could go out there and go fishing. My father was a marksman. He was actually the nation's best marksman in like 1964, 67. His pictures of him shaking Nixon's hand and stuff. So we do a lot of weird shit, you know, a lot of sports and stuff like that. Not sports, sports. I, uh, you ask any human being that knows me, and people that know me, am I lying, comment. No one on this fucking earth. Like, I can't even think of an elementary school. No one on this earth could ever, ever, ever say they saw me participate in a sport. No, no, no. They, I never, ever hit a ball with a bat. I never threw a ball into a fucking basket or ran with a ball with fucking football. No, no, no. I played handball. Yes. Handball I would play. I swam like a motherfucker and ran. I love running and jogging. Actually, I just came. That's why I'm like this. I got sweats on and stuff. I actually just came from a jog about three hours ago. Yeah, I did a good three miles, four miles. Yeah, I like to go over the 59th Street Bridge. That's right here. Each side, mile and a half. I right, boom, boom, but it's not, it's kind of hot. And I'm like, yeah. So I stopped halfway on the, on the way back and just fucking walked the rest of the way. I could keep going. I mean, in the fucking around Halloween and shit, I run over that bridge and then back to First Avenue and then down First Avenue to York Avenue and 60th Street. And I get on the river. And from there, I jog up to the mayor's house on 82nd Street and back. That's a good five miles right there. But that's when it's nice out. Like, this shit is hot, man. Plus, I worked all day. I got up at six something in the morning, you know? But I, uh, I do, do jog a lot, too. And once again, talking about me having abs, uh, like you guys, uh, or maybe it was women. I hope it was women talking about my abs, you fucking freaks. But um, yeah, I do shit like that. I run. But like I said, it's not from, to be, you know, like looking, hey, look at him, you know? It's. Just to keep my powder dry, like, since I can't write graffiti, I am like, I was fucked up, man. Like, yo, I was like, I couldn't sleep and shit. You know, not like I'm sweating the case, like, fuck that shit, man. You know, I, I was just fucked up. Like, yo, I, it, you know, like, now they know who I am. Like, if you read that article, like, you know, 
and like I've explained, like by 1989, they, they say I had 13 arrests. You know, the most, it's only two of those for graffiti. I got caught once when I was 15 and once when I was like 17 or 18. And I never got caught again until, and that was, all right, when I was 18, I was born 68, 78, 89, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 84. That was 1985, last time I got caught up until 2017. You know, that was a fucking while, you know. But yeah, that's the, the truth behind it. All them other arrests was just me fucking around at a lot of assaults, uh, shoplifting, uh, larceny, shit like that, yeah. But, I mean, you know, that's what I would do. Like, I believe, you know, when I got married, like I said, 1989, 1990, I was living up in the Bronx and shit, and I was still shoplifting and stuff, but... I, it was hard to get used to, like, not having that kind of money, because, yo, we were getting paid, man. I ain't gonna lie, like, when we were stealing motorcycles, like, we all, you know, it was just, it was good times, man, it was good times, but, you know, I, I figured the shit ain't gonna last forever, and like I said, trains got clean, the motorcycles got low, Jack, JJ passed away, the music was bullshit, it was no good rock and roll or nothing, you know, I figured, yo, it was like, morphing into a butterfly or some shit, you know? Like, I realized this shit's done. It's over with. Like, this graffiti is done. That's it. You know? I had a good run. Like, I, I always look ahead and people wonder why I stayed writing graffiti for so long. That's another hundred and something episodes. <laughs> but, um, I look at things and I plan things and I figure things and I think in a way people don't see it, but I really looked at it like, yo, I've been, like I went, oh, I got locked up, I was in juvenile centers twice, and the first time I came out, everyone's sitting on the park bench, you know, <clears throat> smoking weed and shit, taking LSD, crack really didn't come out yet, <clears throat> and I, second time, I come back out, everyone's still sitting on the bench, doing the same shit, you know, <clears throat> It's like just less people, and, and there's like newer faces, because newer kids come in, hey, what's up, you know, they move to the neighborhood, or, you know, they're, they're introduced through someone or something, and then they're sitting there, and someone else is dead, like, yeah, you know what I mean, it's like, yeah, so I was kind of like, yeah, I, I kind of had enough of this shit, you know, <clears throat> I'm like, Spofford and the juvenile centers, that shit fucks your head up, like I said, fighting for your life. And Spofford, man, a fucking white boy, 135 pounds, 15 years old. That shit fucks your head up, man. Like, you know, I never really thought about, like, getting married and having children and a, a picket fence with a yard and all that. Like, I was like, yo, fuck that, let's get down. Like, I was ready. Like, you know, it was almost like an honor to get shot and killed in the street or something. Like, the mentality in my head, you know. And... Uh, my wife, uh, Deborah, at that time, told me, hey, look, you know, had enough of this shit. Come with me up to the Bronx, or if not, don't speak to me no more. So I went with her up to the Bronx, and, you know, I realized this is another path. Like, this shit, like, maybe she's right. Like, this shit's kind of crazy from, like, an outsider's point of view. You know, like, I mean, don't get me wrong, she lived in the South Bronx and this and that, and, and even in her country in Guyana, it was very rough, man. You know, I was out there, I, I, I went down there, it was fucking wild shit down there, man. But yeah, all said and done, it's like, yo, dude, I'm, I, it, like, in her mind, this ain't living. You know, just like me saying when I was in Spotify, like, yo, this shit ain't living. But, like, that was the destination I was fucking heading, you know? And I didn't give a fuck. I was going with my fucking boots on and my bells ringing, you know? Like, bring it, you know? Like, it was... Like, you already know you're going to get locked the fuck up. That's why it's also important. Like, see, I don't say I don't follow these... I don't follow these graffiti rules. But there are things in my mind that make sense. I'm not even talking about graffiti, but... You know, like I say, instead of running all over the city stealing spray paint, once you're of legal age, you just steal money to buy the spray paint, you know? <clears throat> but, um... Ah, I forgot it. I was onto something. I was onto something. I was gonna blow all your fucking minds, man. But, <clears throat> I can't remember what it is. Yeah, you guys fucked me up here, man. Shit. Yeah, I had something good to spit there. Damn, 
time, maybe next time. But yeah, you get what I'm saying. People, yeah. It was something about like how I was living and people watching me and looking at me. And kind of like, you know, this is like some, you know, it's like they'll be talking, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, then we can cut them open. And they're like, oh, dude, like it's not that kind of a party. You know, like, my, like yeah, violent. And it's just, you're like in there, in there, in there. And that moment, like 90, no more trains and everything's dead. And this woman's offering me another path to take. I chose that path. Now, I stayed on the other path. All these other people, they just kept dying. Newer ones kept popping up. But you see, I asked Lace this, and I'm going to ask him when he comes on this podcast. Uh, I don't, I, one thing I never understood is, I mean, Lace pretty much invented the 357 crew. I mean, I might have wrote it first, but he said, hey, but he's the person that turned it into a crew. And I never understood why he stuck around with us. Like... He could have been sucked in by a good crew, like a real fucking crew, like a piecer wise. I don't mean we weren't good, but we were just savages, man. We were fucking savages compared to all these other people, man. We were savages, man. We're like, I mean, not even in graffiti, like I said. I, I don't give a fuck who you were, you know. <laughs> it's not like, oh my god, that's this guy, or that's the. We're like, whatever, that's more fucking reason, you know what I mean? Like, for real, it was crazy. And Lace was. He could fight me, he, locked, he knocked a lot of motherfuckers out, he threw me through a window, you know. <clears throat> but he was more like his language and his, uh, easier to talk to, <clears throat> I guess, yeah, would be the term. So yeah, he was 357 Prez, <clears throat> and he, he did a lot of fucking graph. I mean, even straight on up, you look at the whole picture with this dude, man. <clears throat> even with me, like all just train tunnels, even like after the fucking subways, we could we continued to ride on them clean subways for a couple of years after that. And I mean, hit him, hit him, hit him. You know, it, like we were out there like that. It was, everything we tried it seemed to fail. I, I mean, we would accomplish what we wanted to accomplish, but they'd get rid of it. Like every time we like, yo. What about if we take, this is another one, this ain't me just shitting out the fucking ass. This is true. We were like, yo, what if we get that Garvey Supermarket Inc. And we write under the chairs, because the chairs at this point, they didn't have anything under them. Like, it was bare space, you could slide your bag there. But if you're standing in the middle of the train, holding on, waiting for your car, you look at the floor, you can see it. And it's an area where people won't walk on it and smear it, and they can't really mop it too good. So like, yeah, what if we get that Garvey Inc.? Now, Garvey's is purple supermarket, and we right, right there, real flooded, like we hit a hundred cars or something. We did it. Never saw it. <laughs> you know, like, you know, we're like, aha, what if we did that? And, uh, uh, done. Like, so, you know, it's just, we got old, you know. You know and then we, at that point, we're like, fuck it. We can't get the trains, we'll get the tunnels. Yeah, let's do that. That's a good one. And we did that for a while, and I don't know what happened to that. I, I was with this girl for a while, and I guess he kind of, you know, that, you know, a woman in a relationship that kind of slows you down with your process and shit, you know? I mean, of course, you'd rather lay in bed with your woman than fucking jump around a train tunnel with Andrew, you know? <laughs> That's the bottom line. And then when um, the woman wasn't here no more, Andrew was into something else, you know, that made lace, so... We never really clicked off. We never actually finished what we were planning on doing. And, I don't know, he's older than me, so I'm 53, he's got to be about 58, maybe he's fucking pushing into 60 at this point, yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah, damn, I wish I could remember what the fuck I was talking to, man, die, you fucking guys, fuck me up, damn, I ain't gonna sit here in silence, man, yo, um, keep doing this stuff, so yeah, graffiti, uh, spray paint, let me think if I can think of another one with the spray paint, spray paint, spray paint, uh, I got caught stealing in Lampson's. I used to steal spray paint with Nash, OA, U5 crew, 357, yeah, that's my boy, Nash, Richie, I used to steal spray paint with him, uh, Rost, Rost, I used to steal with him, these guys, we did it just to have fun, like, we're just fucking around, you know, smoking weed and shit, <laughs> you know, like, but, no, nah, Nash, he, he had some good systems, he had some good ideas, uh, you know, <clears throat> Uh, Ross was just an amazing thief, man. Ross, who God rest his soul, man. Yeah, he was an amazing thief. Man. He also wrote Sack. He used to kill the double R. Ross. 
Good writer, man. Who else did I steal shit with? You know, there's this guy I always want to ask you guys. Maybe you could comment. I never heard from him again. And he was in that truancy program I was talking about. <clears throat> He's a dude. He actually hooked me up with some shit out in Brooklyn somewhere. It was pretty cool. Like, it was sliding down poles and shit like that. It was outdoors. <clears throat> I was young. About 17 years old. Anyway, this guy wrote C.B. Yeah, C.B. Like a C.B. I put him up there. But they probably didn't mean that. But C.B. X-Men. I remember the, it was a big, nice top-to-bottom floating around that he did. You could see the C and the B. It was almost like O.E. style. And he was uh, X-Men. That's what he always pushed. I think he was pushing WOW, too. Yeah, he brought me some cool places. Let me see if I can come up with it. Uh, yeah, it was kind of like this. I don't know if you can see. I'm going to do it right here, and then I'll tell you. It used to go like this. I wonder if that happened to this guy. Anyone knows about him, or maybe he himself? Go get at me, dog. He used to write like this. Yeah, this B would be real long. Like that. Like, be like this. Can you see it? Be like and then he'd go under there, then his B would be like, like that. Yeah, like that. X-Men. See me. His name was Alberto. Alberto. Alberto Martinez. It's about this tall. Spanish dude. <clears throat> Looked very like Mexican descent. Short hair, comb to the side, round bug eyes. Yeah, I wasn't like that. I was, a truancy, I was in like the 8th grade, ninth grade with him at that point, and he showed me some cool places. We stole shit a lot. Me and him stole the last spray paint together. His name was Albert. A-L-B-E-R-T. Alberto. Yeah, cool dude, man. He always wore a jean jacket, and he would wear the pro keds. Not even the commas, the pro keds and the ponies. I remember a pony, yeah. He'd wear a jean jacket, blue jeans, the leaves. Yeah, he was a cool dude, man. I went to school with him for like a year or two. And he brought me to a couple of cool places. I brought him to a few racks. Another guy was Nays, BVD. Uh, him with doo-wop in them. They're from the Lower East Side, like TNS and shit. Nays, N-A-Z-E, Isidore. Isidore Fernandez, Izzy. Yeah, he was the one that fucking showed me that shoe dye. When you take the shoe dye with the wire, with the fucking little thing, and boom, boom. You can't say, yeah, I was like, what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> you know, and he pulled that shit out. It was like, Griff. You know, and I was like, oh, shit, that's pretty cool. Yeah, is he, man? Yeah, I saw pictures of him. He's still around. He's down the low east side. Uh, yeah, I was in school with him, too, yeah. And he had Stan. He also had uh, Corden Sheen. The, the Maganado Brothers. Fuck, yeah, uptown, man. Them boys, not even with graffiti, man. Edgar and fucking... Um, George Malganado, the, yeah, those guys, yeah, they put it in. I mean, I'm talking about graffiti. I'm talking about like <laughs> living life, you know, uptown, you know, around like the polo grounds and shit. Yeah, crazy fucking dudes, man. Um, you yeah, know, those guys are early on. I stole the like, spray paint and stuff. And not with Izzy, not with Isidore. I never stole spray paint with him. But I, we were fucking around with that ink stuff. I we went to like these little places around 42nd Street because the school was on 48th Street. They would have these little places where the guy fixes your shoes and shit. They shine your shoes and you could stand up there. Real old school shit. We'd go in there and steal all that fucking uh, little shoe dye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we'd go jump around uh, Delancey Street or Bowery or something like that. Jay's or something. F's or some crazy shit, I forget, man. I think it was Delancey Street. You jump in there and the double R's, R's. Well, I remember <clears throat> the bridge and all that shit. But, uh, yeah, who else um, did I steal with? I said Nash, Ross, PK, of course. No, we drive out to Long Island and steal spray paint and shit. Near my dad's house and stuff. Um, Lace I've sold spray paint with. My brother I've sold paint. Now, when I'm being that, I just mean stealing a couple of cans here and there, you know? <clears throat> so, yeah, yeah, I've done that. But, like I said, once I became of age, man, I said, fuck this shit. Like, I'm going to take something that costs $2.50 is this big and stick it here. When 
I could just turn around here and grab something that's worth a hundred bucks and stick it there like you, you get me, right? <laughs> I mean, yo, the bottom line is you're sinning your soul, you know, it's still petty larceny, you know? <clears throat> I mean, once you start getting into larceny, I guess then you get a concern, you know. But yeah, peace. Take care, people, all right? I pretty much can get into this whole shit. I just need a little time. Think about more times. Talk to people. Say, hey, remember this? Remember? Sash, Gary Sash, 357. I stole a lot of paint with him. Yeah, also, Corpse, I stole a lot of paint with him. Um, all those dudes, all the Budweiser boys, all that ESP guys, Nava and them. Stole paint with those guys, you yeah. Stole black books, all that shit, yeah. Yeah, the Budweiser boys, yeah. We used to do a lot of shit with them. Peace. <clears throat>
I believe he really was a really good writer. Like, I mean, he taught me everything I know. <clears throat> but he was really good. Like, he could have wound it up, you know, like I said, he's down with a lot of good crews. It's not my place to say, but, you know, <clears throat> just sticking around with us, I believe he could have been, like, plugged in a lot better, you know, but... I mean, we choose the paths we choose. Me, I continue, I mean, I'll get into the whole 357 story, but honestly, these guys related to me. Like that, the, you know, the, I'm originally from downtown a little further. I'm from the 60s. These guys are from the 70s and 80s and 90s. Guys from my neighborhood, it pretty much just, I don't know, I sat in the park and like shot up and shit. It was just, you know, I'd see this shit as a little kid and shit, and I just, I don't know, I think. I'd rather hang out with the dudes uptown who set it off, you know. Yeah, that's a, yeah. And actually, Joey and Mavroidis is the one that introduced me to them uptown. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, I just was like, we all the same. We were just bugging my fuck out and setting it off, you know. <clears throat> I felt like they understood me and could relate to me, you know. But like other graffiti crews and other writers, even, you know. I'm like I said, I'm a little out there, like, whoa, whoa, easy, Rob, it's not that kind of a party, like, you know, so, I mean, <clears throat> 357, during the subway era, it was a fucking good crew, but I'll tell you, after the trains left, it's like, there wasn't many graffiti writers that actually thought like a graffiti writer in 357, and uh, that's why it's pretty much, in my eyes, I don't know. We'll get into all that stuff. But now, you keep your eyes open. <clears throat> I'm going to post this picture. The um, one I was saying that I did. The Rook gave me the outline. How to do my little bubble letters. He taught me how to do it. Well, I mean, he just did one right in front of me real quick. And I was like, wow, well, that's cool. You know? <clears throat> but, um, yeah, it's like an avocado green one. This is the avocado greens that I stole from, uh, I think I got those from Janovic. Janovic Plaza. Yeah. I gave Andrew the jungle green. I like the avocado. And you'll see too, it's actually a pretty fat cat, man. Like, we were able to get our hands on some good shit, you know, and do some good graffiti and stuff. And, well, take care, people. Hey, let's not forget, September 1st. Boop, boop. Nah, <laughs> fuck September 1st. I'm going to go slow now. I, you know, I obviously, I did what I do. You know, I went to a beautiful Guns N' Roses concert at, at MetLife Stadium and stuff. You know, I stretched out a little bit in the summer. Uh, to relax and get a little sunlight and stuff, went to the beach and shit, you know? Yeah, but, um, yeah, September 1st, like I said, it's going to be more religiously. All right, peace, people.